Wireless LAN Overview. Wireless lives on layer one and two of the OSI model. In wireless LAN, we have radio frequencies that are radiated into the air from antennas that create radio waves. One of the things about the wireless LAN is that it behaves like a hub. And in a hub, if you guys recall, we have what's called a shared signal, meaning everybody that's connected into the hub they're all sharing the same piece of wire, if you will. And the communication happens to be half duplex when it comes to the hub, meaning only one device can send data and it can only send or receive. It cannot both send and receive at the same time. It can only transmit in one direction. Either it's sending something or it's receiving something that's half duplex. So the pictures at the bottom of the screen are showing us to the left of how a wired ethernet hub looks like. And to the right, we see how the wireless access point operates. It's the same idea. The only difference is you're changing the medium. Instead of a wired connectivity, we're now on the wireless radio frequency. Wireless technology uses CSMACA, which is carrier sense multiple access collision avoidance. And what that means is only one device transmits at any given point in time. And other devices use random back off timers and have to wait their turn before they're able to transmit data. And each frame must be acknowledged by the access point before the next one is sent. And if the acknowledgement is not received, what ends up happening is we retransmit data. That's why on the wireless network, the actual throughput that we end up experiencing is a lot less than what's advertised by the access point manufacturer. And here are the two biggest challenges of the wireless technology. First, things like interference. So if your access point is behind a wall, for example, there's an obvious interference there. If there's a metal, there might be another type of interference there. Even things like moisture and dust in the air, believe it or not, could also potentially cause interference, and we'll discuss more details momentarily. And the second big Achilles heel of a wireless LAN network is security. If you think about it, guys, anybody who happens to be within the range of the wireless access point can communicate with each other. That includes everybody, good guys and the bad guys, and a lot of the bad guys actually exploit this because shared airspace is no different than you communicating in open public. Let's say you go to a coffee shop and you have a phone conversation and it's supposed to be a private conversation. Well, if you're speaking in a public space like a coffee shop, other people can listen to you. Similarly, on a wireless network that is publicly available to everybody. As you can imagine, everybody who's connected to that wireless network has the ability to eavesdrop and listen into anybody else's conversation. So that's a pretty scary thought. Security has come a long way since wireless was introduced back in 1999. Today, we're looking at really high levels of security, but one thing I want you to keep in mind is it has to be implemented properly for you to take advantage of it. Some additional basic terminology. SSID in the wireless network stands for Service Set Identifier. That's the name we connect to. So for example, if you fire up your wireless card on your laptop or your phone or your iPad for the first time, I'm sure you've noticed that you'll see a collection of different wireless devices that you can connect to. And then you'll find the one, uh, for example, that happens to be your home access point. You'll pick that SSID, whatever you called it, that assures me that I'm connected to my 
own personal access point and not somebody else's access point. So this is how the wireless networks are differentiated. The service set piece here means group of wireless devices. One thing you need to keep in mind when it comes to SSID, both the receiver and the sender must have the same SSID for them to be able to communicate with each other. And there's another term that's used kind of behind the scenes is BSSID or basic service set identifier. That essentially is a MAC address of the access point. Multiple access points can have the same SSID, but each access point has a unique BSSID. So what that means is, like I said, SSID is a logical identifier. So I can have an access point where I'm advertising different SSIDs. So I, on 2.4 gigahertz, and we'll talk about the different bands in a moment, but on 2.4 gigahertz, I might have one SSID. On 5 gigahertz, I may have a different SSID. However, both of those SSIDs will have a single BSSID because BSSID is a MAC address. And there are three different basic types of wireless sets, and there are two different modes. First one is called IBSS or independent basic service set. Here's how it looks like. So in this scenario, we have direct communication between clients. There's nothing in the middle. There's no access point or wireless router or whatever have you. What you have here is a bunch of clients, laptops, PCs, whatever, or wireless devices talking directly to each other. That's considered ad hoc mode. Then there are two additional service sets. There's basic service set. It's considered infrastructure mode. And in this mode, all wireless clients form a membership with the access point. So as you can see, all these laptops here are communicating with the access point and they form a membership. This membership is called association. So essentially a client associates with the access point. Finally, there is ESS or extended service set. It's also considered infrastructure mode, similar to BSS. The only difference here is when you combine multiple basic service sets together via a wired LAN infrastructure, that's what makes up an ESS and wireless clients associated with multiple APs using the same SSID. And ESS facilitates transparent roaming. So let's unpack this ESS a little bit. So like I said, multiple BSSs connected via a wired LAN infrastructure. So as you can see, there are two access points that are connected to a single switch here. Wireless clients are all using the same SSID as shown here. Both access points are advertising the same SSID. And this is what facilitates transparent roaming. So the roaming component, we'll talk more about it momentarily, is when this laptop, let's say A, moves into the territory of this access point to the right. When it does, we want this to be very seamless. We don't want the connections to drop because as you can imagine, this is year 2021, uh, most of the people are on Zoom calls and WebEx and all that, and they might be communicating with somebody in real time. We do not want that call to be dropped or that WebEx session to be to be timed out. So we set up this transparent roaming where the user just walks around. Here, you are only seeing two access points, but in a, a real world environment, in a large enterprise, you may have a ton of access points on a particular floor, for example. And as a user, as you walk around the floor, you don't even notice a blip. But in the background, you're experiencing transparent roaming that is facilitated by ESS or extended service set. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.